The nine of the 10 people uh, that we've identified that have very good knowledge with respect to the Bidens, they're, they're one of three things, Maria. They're either currently in court, they're currently in jail, or they're currently missing. Honestly, Maria, they fear for their lives. Not only are the Biden lawyers and the Biden White House intimidating them, the media is trying to intimidate and discredit them. And that was House Oversight Committee Chairman Congressman James Comer with me on this program last month on the tremendous pressure that whistleblowers and informants are facing for speaking out against President Biden and his family and their influence peddling scheme. The New York Post's Miranda Devine is now reporting one of those key witnesses, former Israeli Defense Force uh, Colonel uh, Gal Luft, is alive and living in an undisclosed location. Luft vanished last month while uh, on bail, awaiting extradition to the United States to face charges related to arms export controls and the Foreign Agents Registration Act, allegations that he vehemently denies. He tweeted this, I've been arrested in Cyprus on a politically motivated extradition request by the U.S., the U.S. claiming I'm an uh, arms dealer. It would be funny if it weren't tragic. I've never been an arms dealer. DOJ is trying to bury me to protect Joe, Jim, and Hunter Biden. Shall I name names, he writes. Meanwhile, tomorrow, FBI Director Christopher Wray is expected to deliver to the House Oversight Committee a subpoenaed document alleging then-Vice President Joe Biden was involved in a $5 million bribery scheme with foreign nationals in exchange for U.S. foreign policy decisions. Wray facing Comer's threat of contempt of Congress charges until the release of that document. Join me right now with more on the extent of the Biden family's business deals is Florida Republican Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna, a member of both the House Oversight Committee and the House Freedom Caucus. Congresswoman, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. What are you expecting from Christopher Wray tomorrow with that document? And how are you going to prove these influence peddling uh, narratives uh, of Biden and his family? Well, we're expecting him to deliver. As you heard in the previous segment, the speaker even said that if this uh, FBI director doesn't do his job and doesn't answer to Congress, he's going to be held in contempt. You know, over the last couple of months, House oversight, as well as the staff that helps us run the investigations, has proven that we've actually been able to provide evidence. You know, before there was speculation on uh, the Ponzi scheme for influence peddling and also the personal enrichment of the Biden family. And now what we're finding is that these are no longer allegations and we're creating a hard case. In my opinion, Maria, um, what we're seeing right now, if this is true, which I do believe that it is true in regards to um, Joe Biden receiving briberies and Hunter Biden, um, I, I do believe that this is grounds for impeachment. And so it's important that we continue to move forward to bring this to the American people, but also, too, that we, I think, do a house cleaning within our DOJ, because as you had stated earlier, they are protecting this family. The FBI is protecting the Hunter Biden family, and it's not okay. How long has this been going on, and what about this intimidation that we're hearing about uh, on these whistleblowers? This, uh, this corruption scheme has been going back to the time that Joe Biden was vice president. And the intimidation scheme that we're seeing, I mean, it's not unheard of. We saw this happen with former Trump officials as well. Um, obviously, President Trump's family has uh, been subject to this. But what's really alarming about this is, as we know, the FBI, one, has a mole in there that's advising Hunter Biden as to the investigations by the name of One Eye, which, in saying it, it sounds like like it's something out of a James Bond movie, but unfortunately it's true. And then also, too, I mean, my goodness, Maria, with the amount of evidence that's coming forward, it's scary to think that this guy that's currently sitting in the White House has become this corrupt, and it's really only doing one thing, and that's aiding and abetting the Communist Chinese Party. It's something that we as House Oversight, um, it puts all, all of us, I think, big targets on our backs, but we're doing right by the American people. This is nonpartisan. It should remain nonpartisan, but ultimately we have to make sure that the DOJ and the FBI is being held accountable as well. And when they are 
trumping up charges, especially against whistleblowers who are bringing evidence forward to show that this family, that this administration, that this president is compromised. If we don't do our job, we are ultimately going to be responsible for there no longer being justice in this country. Well, I don't understand why your colleagues on the left would be supporting the Communist Party of China. I mean, just this morning, we're looking at a story where uh, a Chinese ship uh, came just 100 yards or 150 yards away from a U.S. destroyer in the Taiwan Straits. We all know the, the CCP's goals to overtake the United States as the number one superpower. And you say you have evidence that Joe Biden is compromised and has been taking money from the CCP. And you're telling me that your colleagues on the left are supporting this? Why? You know... You know, unfortunately, I think some of them are suffering from cognitive dissonance. But also, too, Maria, a lot of my colleagues, they seem to be... Um I don't want to say brainwashed, but they seem to be so far fixated on this green movement. What they don't realize is the green movement and the idea behind it is doing nothing but enabling China. Look, I'm the first person to say I care about the environment. I consider myself a conservationist. However, what they're not realizing is the CCP is exactly doing what, you know, we should be doing. They're expanding their global footprint. They are basically um, going to other countries, harboring those foreign relations so that they can obviously focus on exports for natural resources. Meanwhile, they're pushing propaganda here in our country in order to economically hinder us and tell us that we need to ultimately get rid of fossil fuels altogether. And yeah. so when these people see us bring up what's happening with the Communist Chinese Party, with the Hunter Biden administration, and honestly, the connection that this administration has to these green movements that are tied to the CCP, they think that it's a conspiracy theory, and it's not. And that's why bringing forward this evidence is so important. Yeah, I've been putting a spotlight on the Communist Party of China now for a few years, but the mainstream media does not report on any of this. How much of a problem has it been for you to not get the story out? I remember during the Russia collusion story, the media was just rolling with this collusion story that Adam Schiff kept saying, finally, this past week, uh, somebody else away from Fox asked the question about potentially a compromised position that the president is in. John Kirby was speechless. Watch this. What do you say to the majority of Americans who believe that the president is himself corrupt? Wow. <laughs> Can I take that question? Uh, president, the president, the president has spoken to this. Uh, the president has spoken to this. Uh, and there's nothing to these claims. Congresswoman, your reaction? Nothing to these claims is an absolute farce. We have literal bank documentation from subpoenaed bank records that show that this administration, that this family, that this president is compromised. To go back to what you were saying about how complicit and how hard it's been to get this message out there, you know, um, I will credit this show and Fox for really doing right by the American people to provide a different perspective and show the truth on what's really happening in Washington. But, you know, social media was really a problem. And up until recently with Twitter, we really were fighting with one hand behind our back. And I will speak to Adam Schiff. Maria, I have a privilege resolution that I'm bringing to the floor, and we are going to find that man $16 million for using his position to lie to the American people and ultimately push something that not only destroyed our country, ripped us apart, but also, too, is responsible for almost, I believe, maybe even potentially permanently damaging foreign relations. He's a criminal. What he did was wrong. And Adam Schiff, you will be held accountable. Wow. Well, look, we watched it and lived it all while he was going out there as the chairman of the Intelligence Committee telling us that there was collusion in plain sight. He had to know better. He was the chairman of the committee. Absolutely. He said that he saw the, and I quote, smoking gun, and yet he was privileged to information that not even I or many of my colleagues would be able to see. He used that position. He he absolutely aided and abetted a corrupt FBI into investigating a, a sitting president. And yep. I would even say, Maria, you know, some people would say that in doing what he did, not only did he bring dishonor to the House of Representatives, but he really destroyed, I think, the sense of camaraderie that we had in this country in pushing an egregious lie that cost the American taxpayers over $32 million. It did rip the country apart. That's true. Congresswoman, it's good to see you. We'll be watching your work. Please come back soon. Thank you.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.